let's head to the northeast of England. And way back in the day, when when Yanish was just a young lad, there was a singer called Carl Douglas, and his only real hit was "Everybody what? Was Kung Fu Fighting." Was he Scottish by any chance, or or no? Or he, it, he could is he, sing. Is about, he a Hearts fan or something like? That? Well, we'll get to there when it's Celtic before the end of this. Don't you worry about that. But everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Um, Raul Jimenez, Yanish, first of all, I was watching NBC's coverage over here, and Robbie must have said, no, that's, ne that's never a red card. And there's no Premier League referee that would give that as a red card. And I'm thinking, Robbie, what? I want to get your take, and I want to get LME's take. First of all, was it a red card for his whatever it was on Longstaff? <laughs> I mean, Lou, you should know, and I know why you're asking me this question, because, you know, Robbie Musto is a friend of ours, and I'm pretty much yeah. on the same, same wavelength uh, uh, with him, you know, when he was with us uh, many years ago. Look, by, by the book, by the laws of the game, I mean, excessive force, yeah, he was at pace, he was going, uh, you could sense it. I think, we're, you know, we're very sensitive, uh, especially when the blow comes uh, into an opponent's head as well. So I suppose if I was pressed against the wall and somebody was waving the the, the, the law book at me, maybe. But I, I'm with Robbie on that one. I just I don't think there was any malice. I don't think the force was such. You could see he was turning away. You could see the reaction. Uh, I, I, I'm always, you know, the common sense is part of the laws of the game, as we've seen it. You know, today you can tell me this is what the laws of the game say. And and tomorrow, even though they say so, a uh, decision is going to be different. Uh, common sense is important to me. Uh, to me, it's, it's you know, maybe I'm a player here, but that to me wasn't a red card. Okay, Luis Miguel, what's your take on it? And did it look worse than it actually was? Well, it's a good thing that I'm not a former professional player because I will say the letter of the book. It was a red card. It was harsh, definitely, but it was a red card. He was airborne. He lost complete control, excessive force. The ball was nowhere near where he was. I actually looked at it over and over and over again to try and figure out his thought process because, yeah, he kind of, you know, he was faked out by the initial move, but why are you jumping midair in the first place? And then the moment that happened, it's all over for him because he had no control of what was happening and that initiated itself into a red card i mean yes it was harsh because clearly he felt bad and clearly he didn't mean mm. to do it but the moment that you lose control of your own senses in that moment and you hit a player just like that with such excessive force it's a red card okay law 12 careless is a foul mm. reckless is a yellow using excessive force or serious foul play is a red. Look, ultimately, it was given as a yellow, first of all, and then it was upgraded. And it doesn't help because he's been in good form of late. And it was nil-nil at the time. Janos was talking about other teams are struggling with injuries. They lost Fabian Scher after, before the 20th minute mark, Newcastle. So another change they had to make. And Joe Linton had to go off as well in this game. But Newcastle won it by three goals to nil, Janos. How much of that was because they were playing the 10 men and how much of that was because they were able to find a way? Well, it didn't hurt them. But I think, you know, if you're talking about Newcastle, I think, you know, this result could have happened uh, uh, if, if there was no sending off. I mean, if you look at Newcastle, I mean, they have this incredible spirit, right? We can sit here and talk about what's happening at Chelsea or Manchester United. Uh, similar number of injuries. You know, this is even worse uh, with Fabian Scher. I think we could see it uh, uh, coming. I mean, he was already struggling against Milan. I don't know how he stayed on the pitch. That's what's happening with a team that has to, that continuously, I mean, I think there was a, a run of games with five or six straight where they pretty much played the same lineup uh, with Dubravka being the only change in one of them. Today was rotated a little bit. Uh, you know, Sven Botman is back on the bench, so maybe uh, for the next game he can fill that uh, massive hole that Fabian Scher uh, is going to fill. Then Burn, the sp spiritual leader, was back. But I, that, that's what I mean. This was incredible what they do. I mean, uh, uh, no excuses whatsoever when it comes to Newcastle. It hasn't been an easy season. Obviously, that difficult, difficult group uh, uh, in the Champions League that they've had. They finished fourth. No shame because uh, they've beaten uh, Paris Saint-Germain at home, uh, of course. Uh, uh, drew away uh, to Milan, even though uh, outplayed. So look, that spirit exists. 
I want to I want to talk about Bruno Guimaraes because everybody that knows mm -hmm. me knows that I love Rodri. What he's doing is is absolutely incredible. If you look at his statistics, uh, obviously first goal, uh, he was the driving force on that one to then burn that uh, the, the the assist with the outside of, of the foot. Uh, I don't know. I, I think he's at the level of Rodri. We have to consider him because he's been absolutely incredible. And when you speak about spirit and heart. How can you not mention Miguel Almiron? Because, I mean, he's been the constant for every manager on this team and, and maybe not the first one we talk about. But uh, if you look for energizing uh, Bonnie and spirit, uh, hmm. my goodness, he's the one. Luis Miguel, when a team is having to play extra games for the first time in a while, i.e. Champions League games or European ties, and they don't quite know what to expect, Newcastle, great to see them back in the Champions League, but... It's no coincidence that a lot of them are walking wounded. A lot of them are, are look like they're blowing out their backside because they're so tired. Of course, they want to be in Europe after Christmas. They're not. Could that, in a way, help them that they're playing Saturday to Saturday rather than Thursday, Sunday, Saturday, whatever, going forward? Yeah, it definitely helps them because it definitely has been a problem because it, it, it's kind of like this sophomore slump when you're having a successful debut and then you come back in the second, it's kind of the same thing where I think the amount of games has um, not completely, uh, you know, shaken Eddie Howe, but it has bothered him in terms of balance. I think I was reading some statistics where he's the manager that's used the least amount of substitutions in the Champions League. So when you do that, I think that you're leaving those only smaller number of players that you're using at peril, which is what's happening. A lot of injuries, which you don't want to, really have on anybody, right? But specifically at Newcastle United that, like Janic was saying, play with so much heart and vigor, especially at St. James's Park. So if they don't have Champions League, as they don't next year in 2024, then now the week becomes easier for them to do or at least better to handle. But you got to feel for them because there's a lot of injuries there. But they did win today. But I tell you something, Raul Jimenez doesn't get sent off. I don't think that would be the result or even maybe a win because Fulham were on fire before this. Yeah, scoring five mm -hmm. a couple of times and I think they'd scored or averaged four goals over the last four games. Mm -hmm.